Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to Let's Chop It Up. Please like and subscribe, yeah. find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Spotify, and all the places you find your podcast. Gentlemen, what's up? How you guys doing, man? How was your week? Good. I'm doing good. good. How's doing everybody? Good. Doing good. So what's up, Rod? How was your week, Rod? Uh, it was all right. You know, you know, you guys know I was a little bit under the weather. You know what I'm saying? I did a little short stint in the hospital, but I'm home. I'm home now. Everything's good, you know. Happy, happy that you recovered, brother, man. I was worried yeah, about yeah. you. No, no, they can't keep me down. They can't keep me down. Can't, can't, can't keep a real brother down, man. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear you, brother. Glad Derek, how's you, how you doing, brother? Yeah, man, I'm working in there, man. I'm just in there working, man. Uh, everybody know, talking about talking about my son again, man. We spoke, <laughs> we spoke again, man. He's doing well. Um, what's new with him, man? He's just he's just cooling. He loves he's love he, he's digging he's digging this next phase of um of um. I guess maybe like man, he's waiting to start a school, so um, he's just he's just hanging out. Feels like a college campus, he told me, and he's just waiting to start. Man, you oh, know, so man. I'm blessed, man, with that, man. And my other two, I'm working on my other two now. Okay, cool, you know? cool. You make sure you get the Navy Federal uh, uh credit union too. Oh yeah, he's yeah. on that already. He's on that already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we we squared that away, boy. You know, and, like, ma and make sure he gets you in there too, man. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> get in there too. that's a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got it. Don't ask me how I got it, but don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got the hookup on a lot of stuff. All Kelvin, right. how was your week, brother? How was your my week? week my week was good. You know, it was freezing here, and um, but the winter's been good to us because we haven't had much snow. So I'm good with that. And I'm, I'm thinking about trying to get into work, working out, getting to fitness. And so what I've started off doing was just doing mental reps. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not exercising <laughs> and I'm not working out, but mentally I'm I see myself <laughs> with a different body already. You know what I'm saying? So it starts inside. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, but 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 the bigger question is what's on the chopping block, D? Well, we got a lot going on the chopping block. As we know we have a new president in town. We have the inauguration. Um we could let's let's start there. And then we can start with the pardons also. Okay. So we so the inauguration, how do you guys feel? You saw the inauguration, what do you guys think about it? What's up, Chicken um, Wing? Yeah, they go, Mr. Chicken Wing. Yeah, what's yeah. up? Um, <laughs> tell you the truth, I mean, I thought the, the inauguration was cool. Um, it, it, it felt different because people weren't there. You couldn't hear people cheering or applauding, you know what I'm saying? So that was a different feel. But um, my favorite part about it was um, the young sister that, that got up there and um, gave the poetry. She was oh, my yeah. favorite part. Oh, yeah, I think her name is... Part. Amanda Gorman, Amanda Gorman. Yes, I just I just started following on Instagram, so I just started. Yeah, yeah, wondering. she's gonna blow. She's gonna blow as a result of that. I think that was an amazing look for her. Yeah. Um, is, is she's she's from Harvard too. She went to Harvard or she graduated from Harvard. I'm not. I'm not even sure. I mean, shoot, if she's not, she's Harvardish. Yeah, she's. <laughs> <Harvard -ish. laughs> no, but that was that was my best part about the inauguration. Yeah, and um, you know, I thought it was a good look for her. You know. Yeah. yeah, shout out to my well, man Max and Miko coming on here. I see him up there. But I'm sorry, no, go ahead. I, sorry. I'm embarrassed, man. I actually caught it late. I thought it was starting at 12 New York time, and so by the time <laughs> I got it, I see Obama and then walking out. I'm like, oh man, it's a wrap already. But I was very, very excited about it. And you know, just to get rid of um, the administration, I think the last administration is like um, when somebody need when you just need to air something out. And you mm -hmm. just need to put the vent on and get rid of it and just bring some fresh air in. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. It felt like yeah. stability. It felt like there's an adult back in the room. It felt like uh, America can kind of get you know back on some good footing around the world. So I was really excited to see that. And even looking at the first um, uh, press conference, you know, and, and looking at the press secretary, it looks like there's some some intelligent people back in the room. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna it's be yeah, like like I think Miko said, like you know, it's like breath of fresh air, fireworks, all that stuff, and it just like feel like we're getting back to like adults, like you said, the best being like adult, like the press, the, the press secretary answering questions, no lies, no false statements, where you can check it real quick and like, damn, that was a lie. Like you know, I think that's yeah. what we, we we're missing. We're missing adults back in the room. That's definitely yeah, that's definitely. My, my favorite part was watching uh, was it Marine One take off, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was just that feeling of closure, man. You know, because yeah, yeah. You know, regardless to what uh, ideological side that you stand on, you have to admit that the last four years have been one based on division and and almost in destruction, if you ask me. You know, so um, so maybe we just kind of needed to just end the whole matter. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I, they don't yeah. maybe, yeah. we did, you know. So yeah. um, so it was good to just see that and kind of wipe the slate clean and get ready for something new. You know? mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. 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 It, it would get, yeah. I think the last four years was full of anxiety for everyone. And yeah. I think yeah. this yeah. this this would this was the uh the the straw that broke the camel's back was COVID nineteen. It's yeah. so scary that you know, like it's this this white rap. I think I can't think of Marlon something, and he wrote the song. It was a feature of MSNBC, and I followed the dude on Instagram, Marlon Craft. That's his name, and he was just saying what we all said. If it wasn't for COVID nineteen, we would have four more years of Donald Trump. I strongly yeah. believe that. I, I had I had that conversation <laughs> just recently with my wife, and yeah. she said, "Do you think if COVID didn't hit, would Donald Trump had a one?" I said he would have. Had a damn sure strong chance of winning if he absolutely, yeah, if yep, did. absolutely. Said, but if you look at Donald Trump's history, he's always took it taking his own self out. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, but, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, it's, so you so you're saying that, if you're saying that COVID did his presidency in or uh or no, it's, you know it's, it's his handling of COVID. If handling of COVID, if 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 COVID it's mishandling, never, right? Right. You're mishandling. If covering yeah. if COVID never came along for him to mishandle it. Mm-hmm. He had a chance of probably winning again because mm-hmm. you got to understand he had a lot of people believing his lies. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, so realistically, that, you know, if you, if you have a strong economy, it's hard to uh, unseat a president. And yeah, that's yeah, what he's yeah. going to run on the economy. Yeah. He, you know, he took all the credit for everything well, Obama did. And then if he'd had a strong economy, right. forget it. They'd have brought him back in. He, he oh, rode yeah. Obama's wave. He rode Obama's wave. And oh, yeah. Credit yeah. For a lot of stuff that he did not do. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's typical white man. They ride the wave of all the inventions oh, we have, everything. They they, they 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 always do that. Look, look at the inventions we have all the, over the time. White men and, always ride the and, wave. And I yeah. want to say, and I, I want to say for for all of my white friends that I told to listen to the show, when he, <laughs> when he says that, he doesn't. <laughs> he, he doesn't he's not talking about you. He's just saying it, it, the I'm white not, man I'm person. Not saying, <laughs> theoretical, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not uh, saying what, about what all, really all, is all, white. All my white you know. You know, and you know, and and you know, I don't want to offend anybody because we do have over we do have over twenty seven thousand viewerships in in Latin speaking countries. So I just want to make that clear on Facebook. So we are going somewhere with this. So I want to make sure all my whiter skin white uh, Latin friends that what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the man. <laughs> right, right, right. No, right, right. So you talking about the man? Yeah, yeah. Not the guy at work. Yeah, not, 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 not man. you, the man. You know. <laughs> the man. Yeah. You know, so, so hilarious. And I'm, I'm just happy, like right now, that we they shut his Twitter down. I mean, they made everybody made enough money off him, so now they finally shut it. Like, okay, the cash cow's over. Let's move on. They know the new the world is changing, but he was the king of pettiness. Yeah, king of the pettiness petty. and lies and lies, and lies, and so many yeah. lies. And you know, and I don't know too many people more petty than him, except for my man Chicken Wing. He's the most petty dude I know. You know, but <laughs> besides that, I don't know anybody more petty than Donald Trump. So yeah. what, what anything about about his petty? Does anybody want to talk about it? Anybody want to say anything about that? <sighs> you know, well, all right. I was thinking about it. Something that I did that was really petty. This goes back to college, uh, Virginia Union University. Um, the semester I did there. <laughs> and so <laughs> all right. So for, for people that don't know, New York and Virginia pretty much have about the same weather pattern. At the end of August, going to September, it starts to get a little cold or whatever. But we get there in August for school. You know, you know, New York school starts in September. College in the South starts in August. Mm-hmm. So we have to show up. I got, I meet my new roommate, my man, Darren White, and um, cool dude from Philly. And that Virginia summer was like 95 degrees that year. And I mean, it's blazing outside. I mean, it's blazing hip hop and R&B out there, right? <laughs> so, so... It's real hot. So they had one thing the room did have was a little air conditioner that was kind of built, you know, into the wall. At You know, they put it in somewhere around the turn of the century or whatever. <laughs> and so but the air conditioner worked. So my man Darren catches a cold. I love air conditioning. I can't sleep without air conditioning. So me too. He me catches too. a cold and Darren tells me like, yo, yo, I got a cold, man. I can't sleep under the air. Right. So I'm like, yo, you, you, you want to like put a heavier blanket on or something like it <laughs> no just yo just do me a favor leave the the air off oh. so the first night i'm trying to sleep and i'm talking about this i mean it's hot and you know you can hear mosquitoes and stuff it's just a bad look right <laughs> but we trying to do this to compensate for he, he has a cold so we go out to class and i turn the air on i come back the air is off and it's 100 degrees in the room wow i got so mad I kicked 
put the air conditioner door in and broke it where you couldn't shut it off. Ooh. And I mean, li I literally kicked. It's like a little door that you. I kicked it in and wedged it so you couldn't get it off. And so he gets mad about it, right? And so while he sleep, right, I sneak and turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, he wake up in the middle of the night. See, that's what I'm talking about. You always play it. He sneezing and stuff like that. I started cracking up. My man was ready to take it to them hands, though. <laughs> now my man went from a cold to the flu. And I couldn't help him. Look, <laughs> I know it sounds petty, but look, that's how it is out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm, no, listen, fuck, I, can't I don't blame you. you. I'm a fat man. I don't have air conditioning. It's over. I'm it's over. I, I got to have air conditioning, man. I, I don't have air conditioning. <laughs> I'm, I'm sweating. I'm looking like one of the little verts. If I don't have air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm wearing yeah, teddy bears, wiping myself all over. I'm worried up. You can hide from the cold. Just put more covers on, but you can't hide from that heat. That that's heat. That's no Virginia heat. That's no heat. Oh, no, it was so hot you could yeah. see it. You could see the heat. <laughs> I took it away. Everything <laughs> looked blurry. Everything looked yeah. blurry. I'm like, is that a mirage? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, I got I got one petty story, and it's not me. I got so this is this is this is our producer Jamie, right? We go to school in South Carolina. And Jamie and I used to throw parties, step shows, all kind of parties, right? So we had this one ass uh, bitch ass friend named Claude. I don't care. So you get mad at me. He can't beat me anyway. Right, so, so I'm sitting here like, yo, you just yeah, put his nah, name out nah, there. I don't, I don't care. He's a bitch. He's a bitch. He's a straight bitch. So, so he always just try to clown, clown Jamie right now, right? You know when um and uh when clown, Jamie did things, right? So he realized how much money we were getting off these parties, so he wanted to put in on it. So one of the parties we had, it didn't go too well because these uh these uh this other fraternity that wear purple and gold did some bullshit to us. A lot about the, we having this artist come through. These artists are uh, ninety five south. I think it was. Who did it? Is one of my there, right? And um, so <laughs> Claude thought he was going his money. So Jamie said, "Yeah, I'm FedExing it to you." Jamie puts a gets a FedEx envelope, gets a tracking number, calls, him, tells him what the tracking number is. The so dude is waiting for this package to come. The so dude finally get the package open up. It ain't no money in it. No check, no <laughs> money order, no nothing. Surprise! That's to get his back, ass back, and I'm glad because Claude's a bitch. It's a 2021, you're still a bitch. <laughs> oh, oh, he, wow. he, he spent the money to not give money. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> yeah, word up. Claude did some other foul shit to one of my homies, so he's still a bitch. Yeah, wow. so when he, <laughs> but wow. that's my little upset moment right there. On well, Let's Claude, check Claude, check out our show <laughs> on forgiveness that we did, Claude. <laughs> I won't do this to anybody else, but that dude is foul shit. So, I, so he's uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn about. I don't give a damn about that dude. And, and, see, chicken, we remember that, right? And wing, I'm giving a short version of the story. Wing, I'm giving a short version. Wing, know how the guy is, man. Wing, know how to do this and whatnot, man. So, uh, man. But um, what's up with you, Rob? Yeah, what's up? Huh? What happened? No, it was a the ride. That's oh, oh. so it looked like. What do you think about these criminal charges? You think the criminal charges gonna come with this Trump shit? I just wanna get back on politics for one hot second before oh, we. Um, but him or the people that stormed the camp capital? Well, I'm upset. There's only a hundred people got arrested. That's one thing. Yeah, so, so far, think, right? So far, I think there'll be more. I think there'll be yeah. more. Yeah. 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 They, they just they just locked up somebody for threatening um AOC too. Yeah. That was oh, yeah, yeah. That's one guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not just yeah, threatening. Yeah. Like he's talking about threatening to kill the woman. Yeah, he said he was going to kill her. He was involved in the uh, Capitol storming, and um, they, they arrested his behind. Mm -hmm. But I think there's going to be more people to um, that they're going to arrest. They also um, announcing, um, looking into um, opening some more investigations into Trump for some stuff that he was doing while he was in there. So I, I can tell you, we're going to be talking about that guy for a little while. You'll so, see. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so is the big problem, basically, just so I can get an actual temperature of the country, the big fear is that if they don't do something, America might mean liberty and justice for all. Is that is is that the it big fear that would happen? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. so yeah. so everybody would be have a chance to be included, and that would that would really just throw a wrench yeah. in the whole American plan, huh? Okay. Nah, I mean, I don't I don't look at it that way. I mean, I mean, you you they can paint it that way, but you got to look at it like this, right? Those senators was inside that building when they stormed that Capitol, right? And Nancy Pelosi was in there when they stormed that castle. And I find it very hard to believe that Nancy Pelosi is going to let them get away with that. That's just. Well, no, they have to make an example. If you, if your if your government to. has any integrity, you know what it is. It reminds me of the the rule of the street. You know, I had a cousin that that um, some dude 
like slap my cousin or something like that. Mm. Slap a female. Okay. And my other cousin who's street, they don't even get along with that cousin. But he came out and told the dude, I'm going to do something to you just because it's going to make me look weak if I don't. And at the end of the day, that's just what it is. America has to do something to them mm -hmm. else that makes you yeah. look weak if you don't. That's yeah, right. That's yeah. why yeah. Right. I don't so, I so, see getting away with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, let me ask you something. Since, you know, today's topic, we have stuff going on today about, you know, people getting body changes. stuff like that. We have a couple of doctors on today. Um, is it things that women could do that men can't do? Like yeah. anything? Interesting. Any, yeah. I, you said do I think do that do we think that there's things that women yeah like you know yeah like never... we all have we all people on there today you know some of the things that you know women get their bodies done stuff like that but do you think like it's things that men can do can't do that women can do and they could do together things in general or just related yeah. to that in in, 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 in general yeah absolutely I I can name something that women would women do that men would never do okay What's they, that? Wouldn't have a, they wouldn't have a yoni party. <laughs> Can you explain yeah, to people what a yoni party is, Ronnie? A yoni party is when women get together and steam their the JJs. Yeah, we can't do yeah. that. Yeah, no. we, I can't I see mean, a bunch of dudes say we're gonna steam our balls. I can't correct. We wouldn't we, we wouldn't get together for a ball based <laughs> party like hey guys come over and let's pour some warm water on our balls. Nobody <laughs> we, we, we wouldn't do that. We can't we do, that. do that. We, women can get together and do stuff like that, you know. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, I'm we laughing at Derek it. Face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I don't think uh, we don't like change in a bathroom together. We don't go to bathrooms together. Get up at the yeah, same yeah, time yeah, no, from no. the table and, and yeah. all that group stuff. Not gonna be any of that. You know what I'm saying? And we don't really just be complimenting each other like that. Uh, no. You know what I'm saying? Look at Derek's face. He's still in shock from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I am. Cause I just got emailed by all the sponsors. <laughs> they, they, they didn't so they just said they need a meeting afterward. That's all. Oh, well, well if, if you think Rodney's a bad, you want hear mine? Yeah, uh, no, I don't know. Do we? Want <laughs> oh. oh my god, I can't wait to hear this. I noticed lately a lot of advertising for women getting their booty holes bleached. Men can't go to oh, that. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> there's no way. How do you know that? It, how do you know your booty hole is too dark? I've never seen my booty. I, I guess you busted it open in the busted challenge. I, I I have no idea. The strip club. I, I I have no idea why they know how their booty holes and stuff. Okay, is Casper available? Yeah, Very, we need Casper. Yeah. We need Casper. <laughs> <need Kasper. laughs> no, I, I'll be I'll be honest with you. I mean, I I think we're just um we're socialized different. Mm. We are. We're socialized different, and some of it's good, and some of it's bad. Some of it's organic. You know what I mean? And some of it's not. I think women are more um, apt to share uh, their experiences more. I mm -hmm. think they 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 they'll bond with certain things quicker. I think guys have yeah. to bond over a situation. We'll bond that's, over sports or something like point. that, but we that's won't really point. necessarily share what's in our lives. You know why? This is what yeah. I believe, Derek, and not not to cut you off. This is what I believe. I believe intrinsically, men don't trust other men. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? That's go ahead, I, go ahead, Derek. I don't know, I love. I can dig it. You know. That kind of brings me to a thought of things that women do that men can't do. Like they'll get together, let's say after a breakup, and just kind of like have a fucking party. You know what I mean? It's kind of like yo, it ain't nothing. You know how they do? You know, and they get together. Like men, yeah. like when you break up or go through something with a woman, you just on your own. You got to figure that out, bro. You know what I mean? Most most you got from another dude is man. You know, back when I used to go. Long time ago, long, <laughs> I mean, long, long, long. You might get a little trip to the titty bar or something like that. That's why you be all right. You be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You be all right. You be all right. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You be all right. You be all right. Yeah, you yeah. know, that is, man. Pour some trouble for him. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah that's you, you, know, you know what's funny? You know what's so funny that you say that? When I, 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 I've shared this on the show, when I had that breakup when I was like 23 and the girl cheated, she got pregnant by somebody else. And, you know, I got to go in front of my parents. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that whole day I'm crying. I'm literally crying. Right? And so we come in the room and I, I tell my parents, I'm like, yeah, you know, the girl is pregnant. My father's like, oh, man, this boy done ruined his life. He done this, that, and the third. I'm like, nah, it's yeah. not by me. He's talking about, oh, then what's the problem? <laughs> I'm sitting there like, <laughs> I'm sitting there like, I'm heartbroken. He's like, what's the problem? I don't see the problem. You know, so yeah, dude, dude is just different. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, Chicken Wing says something true though. Dudes, uh, if if it was known that a man had fake abs, 
uh, impl- ab implants, he'd be ashamed if somebody if women would shame him. Yeah, I think women would shame him if he had implants in his in his ribs and stuff like that. No, no ab question. Stuff. Yeah, he should shame himself. I mean, really, just oh, take the man. Twinkies out your pocket. Listen, you got to make a change. That's it. I mean, you know. <laughs> now, nah, but yeah, I, th- I think there's different things, and I think some things, like I said, some things are good. Some things that they they actually I think uh, can relate. Um, they have I think more empathy uh, than mm-hmm. we do, and we 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 yeah. look at a dude complaining about him circumstance sometimes as being punkish. That's it, yeah. and that's that's yeah. kind of the noose around our neck. It's like excuse me, excuse that term actually, but it's just like that's the thing that arbitrage that we deal with all the time. Is because you always have to keep up a certain image, you know. Like I used to talk to dudes in a barber shop that was really street and really out there, and they's like, "Yo, we don't want to be like this. We like this because we have to be like this. Yeah. The neighborhood we come from, the things that we experience, we have to put on this air." Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, you know. I'm, I'm telling you something. Me and Rod, like, I'm, we we and we went to get it. We got get our feet done and all stuff like that, right? So that's one thing men can do, right? But I damn sure I damn sure can't go get uh, except for Kelvin. Uh, yeah, a lot of men don't do that. But a dancer ain't gonna go get a wax with Rod. No, wait. Let's, let's, <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait, you're not gonna get one let's with him, or you just not gonna get one at all? I don't, I don't get one at all. But I ain't gonna get one with him. That's something we can't do. Oh, you getting the wax? We went and got our feet once. Once, yeah, once, once, <laughs> once. Yeah, once. <laughs> we have. I don't want to make it sound like we're going. But I'm, I'm saying tomorrow for my waxes and shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wax. What I need wax. <laughs> I'm just saying, like women, women, like I see, you know, you see girlfriends, your wives, whatever, go out. And they, they go with the girlfriend. Oh, we gonna go get wax, get our nails done, all this other stuff. We, we can't. Yeah, yeah, can't. yeah. Men can't do that. But you know, you know what? The, the reason you can't do it, job, but we ain't going. You know, we don't do stuff like. But that. But you got to yeah. be able to find a different way to say it, though. You can't say we get our feet done. It just you got to yeah. come up with a better terminology than that. There's some <laughs> other way to say it. We'll do it, but it's there's some other way. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. even the pedicure yeah. make you feel a little. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. We got, yeah, we got, we got. They got to have better marketing for God. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, something. I agree with what Kelvin said. Kelvin said that um, you know, we always got to show strength. We can't show weakness. You know, you can't, you can't call call your homie crying over a a chick broke up with you or whatever because your your homie's gonna say, "Yo, let's go." Back in the days, of course, a long time ago, they say, "Yo, let's go get some, let's go get some chicks, let's go here, let's go to DR, let's do all of this." You know, guys are gonna always like kind of make things actually, and sometimes make it worse for you. you yeah, know? a lot of right. times, man. Yeah. It's bad advice, man. Which, yeah, we'll give each other bad advice in a freaking minute. You know, yep. what I'm yeah. <laughs> right. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. But not, 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 I mean, they they connect on a different level than we do. They connect. Yeah, they, do. they do. They go when they, they go on vacation. Their vacations together is different from if we went like we all hung out, went on a guys trip. A totally different atmosphere. Totally right. different. Right. Too. Right. You know, they mm-hmm. say that, that a lot of times women, especially married women, married women to get together and be like, this is my husband and this is my kids and pull out some pictures. Dudes be like, this is what I do for a living. And this yeah. is what I, whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So they, they say women sometimes are more on relationship, guys are more on position. And that's just how yeah. that dynamic yeah. works. But I, but I will say I'm glad of this, though. There is something to be said about just being who you are. And there's certain things. They did this study years ago um, on 2020. And they put a baby, a little boy in a, in a pen. And a little girl in a pen, and they put like a divider between them. And when the girl was blocked mm-hmm. off with the divider, she sat down and just started crying. The boy started trying to bang it down and beat it. And I, I just think that's no disrespect. That was just his nature. In other words, if there was a barrier, he wanted to just beat it up. And the little girl, she saw it as a you know barrier, and then you know she was emotional about it. And I don't know, I don't think that means something derogatory for for women and, and something heroic for men. I just think there's certain innate things. Um, we're just made different for a reason. Doesn't mean better or worse. Mm. Did I clean yeah, it up right? Because gonna... I thought I was, I was about to yeah. swerve off the road. I came back. Right, right. We, okay. we, we still got our sponsors. We still got our sponsors. Yeah, um, yeah. One thing, one thing with uh, with uh, I think Chicken Wings said, like women could go get their lace fronts done together. Men can't yeah. get no lace front wi- wigs and stuff like that. We can't go and get no <laughs> waves. <and> captain, <laughs> we can't go get locks and stuff like that. It just can't. It's not possible for us to do that. Right? <laughs> Have y'all seen this okay. tattoo hairline thing, though, man? Dang, man. I want to you know what? The, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. the tattoo hairline thing, man. You know? That yeah, might be something yeah, a lot of cats are getting that. A lot of cats are getting that. Probably one of our guests, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so real quick, I mean, so we so we talking about all the stuff like that. We do have our first our first guest about to come on in, in like a, in a few minutes right after this commercial. So, Derek, can you bring us this commercial? You're going to talk about all that kind of stuff with uh, 
uh, body enhancement and, and just people having uh, self-love for themselves and doing things they want to do that make themselves happy. So, Derek, bring us our first commercial. Hey, yeah, man. You know, we just got uh, – let's check it out. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> um, and let's get into it, man. Jamie, run, that, run those commercials, <laughs> man. Run them, Jamie. So, um, our first guest is a doctor that helps out a lot of women. I guess a lot of men. We'll find out tonight. She uh, uh, helps them with their goals, what they want to reach. Some of them have their New Year 2021 goals. Some have have goals before. Some people want to have different changes. They was have they wasn't feeling good about themselves. So, I love that the work that she does. She's a good person. Her name is Doctor Bartholomew, but we call her Doctor B. So, Jamie, can you bring in Doctor B? Hi guys, how are you? Hey, Dr. B. How are you doing? Dr. B. How you doing? How you doing? Okay. Good, good, good seeing you oh, again, Dr. B. Same so Dr. Here. B. So Dr. B, can you tell people a little bit about yourself so that people understand the who you are and your credentials and stuff like that? Yeah. Sure, not a problem. So my name is Dr. Janine Bartholomew. Um, I have a um, well, let's just say, um, I have a doctoral in nurse practice. I've been a was a registered nurse for 15 years, went back to school to get my doctoral degree in nursing. And from there, I started, um, you know, um, thinking about something. I wanted something different. I wanted after this labor and labor delivery, home health. I wanted something different. And I myself had some surgeries and I and um, had some enhancements, I should say, not surgeries, <laughs> some mm-hmm. enhancements. And um, I just from there, I fell in love with aesthetics. And that's how I decided to pursue um, my inspiration in aesthetics and um, went back to uh, a spa that gave, you know, provided me the post-op care there and just fell in love with it from just being there as a client and went back. And um, since then, it's been four years now and I've been there and I just love it. It's different and um, it's exciting Um, every day. You know, you leave with joy being able to um, help another woman reach their goals. Mm, That's good. That's good. And I understand that feeling. Let me ask you a question, though. Doctor, you know, it's four men on the show. We're joking. Do you have men clientele? And what do men come in uh, pretty much for? Yeah, I do. I have male male (laughs) clientele. Obviously, they don't like to tell one another. Um, But they do come in. They come in Mm -hmm. for Botox. They come in for fillers. They come in for the pea shop. What's the whole, whole, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> B, You can't sneak in a pea. What's a pea shot? That in. What's a pea shot? I know. I'm, I'm serious. What is a pea shot? I got this. this what is a pea shot? 
So the P shot is basically um, some men. Um, it's basically we take the blood and we spin it and um, we inject the platelets rich plasma back in there, down there in order to help with getting it working again. <laughs> oh, to get it up, not to make an extension on it. Not to make an extension. Not to oh, make an okay, extension. okay. Because you're about to get a lot of money because a lot of guys are walking around here with straight hair. <laughs> you're about to get a lot of money out here, Doc B. <laughs> now you got yeah. 27,000 viewers in, in the Latin country. You'd have had a whole bunch of people flying over here, risking it all. <laughs> extension on there, you know what I'm saying? So, wow. you know, wow, wow, wow. I'm sorry, guys. So let me ask you this question. What What is the consultation like? And I always wonder because I'm assuming uh, when you make this step, uh, you, you probably are able to tell somebody what, they think it's going to look like whatever they have done, but at once it's done, it's done. And mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm assuming from nose jobs to just, you know, certain things that people would do commonly. What is it mm -hmm. like? Are, are you ever in a situation where you could tell someone is on the fence and you may say this may not be, you're not ready for this step yet? So what we do is non-invasive. Everything is non-invasive. So, um, you know, with fillers, you can, you can dissolve them if they're okay. not happy with it. Okay. Um, However, there are certain things as far as uh, that you can't just reverse. But what we do is that when I sit down with a with um, a client, I want to understand what their goal, what bothers them the most, right. because that's how we know what they what they need to address. Because sometimes it's just that they, you know a lot of clients are coming in and saying, "I want to look like this," and they want to show you something on Instagram, and that's not necessarily you got to take them back and explain to them that that's not necessarily how this person looks. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's makeup, it's filter. Yeah, so, yeah. And we have to get them to understand that you want to look like you. You just want a better version of you, not necessarily want to look like this person because mm. no one looks alike. That's why we're different. So by the time we, you know, we have this conversation and we, um, most times what the wishes that they're coming in for they realize these some of them that yes we can, and if we can't help you, we tell you you know straightforward that we can't help you because we're not gonna we're all about giving you um, results. We're not about with as far as giving you false, you know, because um, you know if you have a, a someone that comes in and wants to lose weight, and they um, they want to do something that you know that's not going to really achieve that that it's really that you have to go the surgical route, we then will recommend and, you know, and give you a couple of doctors that you can go, uh, uh, surgical coordinators to go take that path down, you know, mm -hmm. take to go down that path. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Like I have, I have a few homegirls that got the fat transfer to the, to the butt part of that. Now mm -hmm. what's the, what's the, what goes into all of that? Like after you get the, like, do you have to gain a certain amount of weight to get the fat transferred to that part? And then what's the recovery and all that stuff? And what, what does it do? Like massages, anything like that they have to do? Yeah, so that's surgical. So when, you know, so when they come in and um, we see them, we see them pre-op as far as um, if they have, um, their hemoglobin is low, we offer IV drips in order to get them ready for the surgery. Um, then we see them post-op at with uh, my partner, Plasti on uh, in Sunset Park, where we, they different modalities help as far as helping them um, recover because a lot of people they they know just about the surgery they get the money up for the surgery but they don't understand that post op is just as important as having your surgery and you see it you see mm -hmm. people that had the surgery and did not follow post op um, massages or did not follow uh, do any kind of follow up after just had the their healing process is different. They develop certain things that you know that could have been prevented, mm. and um, slowly and surely, most of the doctors are, are seeing that and they are encouraging their clients in order to get post op. Gotcha, gotcha. Anybody question? Doctor, you? Yeah, I got one, Doctor B. Doctor B, do you find that most of your clients that come in there, they're getting procedures done mostly for themselves, or they get procedures done based on things that they see on the internet or for significant others? I want to say at least 50% are getting it for themselves. They're okay. ready to make that change. They're ready, whether they're coming out of a relationship, whether they're reaching a, a, a milestone mm -hmm. of an age that they're really, you know, they're ready to commit to change stuff about them for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so do, you, like, yeah, do you feel, do you feel like the, the, you know, 
social media influences a lot of people's decisions. Absolutely. I do okay. think that because you're seeing that on the social media, um, you know, the, you know, Instagram, they're seeing the, um, the bodies. So of yeah. course that also cre creates the interest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they're understanding that there's, you know, um, there's many avenues because prior to that, you know, a lot of people was, you know, whether they were traveling, you know, um, overseas, now they're going state to state. So they're, they're seeing, they're looking at different doctors work and understanding, um, what it is that they, they, what is their desired goal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So speaking yeah. of what you just said, going across seas, what's the difference and what's the pros and cons you think of, of people that go to DR, Colombia or Brazil? When we saw recently, like Usher Raymond's mother passed away, I think, no, Usher, uh, Kanye West, I'm sorry, Kanye West and Usher's Raymond's uh, wife and stuff like that. And I had a, a, a family member and a, and a few other people I know that went to DR and things didn't go right. So what is, what is the pros and cons of that? Personally, and why do people go? Why do people go to? I would say that how I so I had one of my surgeries overseas, mm -hmm. so um, I went to DR, um, and I think that how it's what you want. You have to research the doctor, whether they be in. U.S. or overseas, you have to do your research. Um, what I find that how, for me, is that how the New York doctors are great. However, um, the contouring, the, 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 the body that, you know, that especially, you know, us African-American are, are designing to have, that I find that how, you know, it's not somewhat, you know, the overseas have more that they're more advanced with that mm -hmm. as far as that. Not to say that some of the doctors up here, are, uh, uh, they're great doctors. But for me personally, when I was doing my research, I wanted I wanted the curves. I wanted something that I was going to be, you know, um, happy with. And I was as I was researching, you know, now you now you have to say uh, Miami is Florida is having is these doctors are in Florida now. But prior to that, you know, it wasn't so common. It was common of going overseas to do it. Um, and I still think that how um, overseas um, you, you know, you're not, it, it, the, the, I guess the regulations a little bit more because there's a, there's a certain amount of fat they can take from you up here. Well, I, I got enough fat to share for everybody. So if you want to buy <laughs> any of your patients, you know, I, I sell this for $5.99. <laughs> they can take all the fat out of my body if they want to. I'm giving it up. I'm giving it up. Right. Hey, Dr. Dr. I was, it seems like much of your job is um, managing expectations, you know, um, just wondering, like, uh, what's the uh, what's the toughest job you've had to do in that regard? You know, just telling somebody or being honest with somebody with regard to, you know, what uh, what to expect or what kind of outcome to, to, to expect. Right. Um, I would say that how it's when you tell them the truth. And you tell them the ex the, that you know their expectation is may not be the way you know the way they envision it. I think most women do understand it mm -hmm. once you tell them that. Most women that and it's how you say it, you know, and they know that how coming to us, um, they're going to get that. We're not just going to take we're, we're, you know if we can't help them, we're going to let them know we can't help you at this point. And this is you know this is some alternatives and it and they usually respect that. Mm -hmm. I think what's the problem is when they, when, you know, they are misled and think that, you know, um, their, um, the exposition can be done and then they don't get that. Then I think that's where the problem is. Doctor, let me ask you this. I, I, I always think that we could possibly where we're headed with younger people, uh, be into in for, um, there could be some damage going forward with younger people um, as they see themselves. And are you seeing um, because of all the social media, because of videos, because of the things that they see in the body, shaping mm -hmm. in the body, shaming and all those things coupled together that we could ultimately start to have maybe like a deleterious effect on the future because people just think, all right, if I don't like the way I look, I'll just go ahead and just change who I am. And sometimes that may be psychological or that just may be internal. Uh, do you think there could be a damaging effect um, on younger people as plastic surgery becomes more prevalent? Yes, I do. I do think that. Um, and um, most women want to enhance it, not 
totally change it. You do have the women that do want to change it. And that is where you have to, um, I think the surgeons have to draw that line and explain them that because you can't change your body frame. Your body frame is your body frame. You can't change that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, it, you know, if the surgeon is very straightforward with them, they'll understand that. What you find is that how one person may tell them that, then they jump to the next person and they jump to the next person until they find that person that's going to do what they want to do. Mm. And that's where it gets tricky. And that's where you, it, you get into problems. And that's where you see that sometimes you hear a young lady have passed away, but you don't know the whole story behind it, that death. Mm -hmm. You don't know what was said and how, you know, what information did that young lady withheld and not disclose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I think that's where the overseas get that because up here, you know, um, our records, you know, you you know, you can get a little bit, you can get more information, you can search more about that patient. But when they go in overseas, that doctor's seen that patient for the first time and don't know any history on them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's basically is is what they give to the doctor. They're they're basing on doing the surgery. Yeah, I, I, I'm reminded of uh, of uh, Dr. West, Kanye, Kanye Ma, uh, West's mother, when you say that, you know, uh, and, and it just sparks up the numbers. And every time I go to the doctor, if you change the doctor, they always want to get your um your old, you know, your, your old medical record. And I'm just wondering how difficult that must have been for her, because I know she was doing, I think she was doing what you were saying, like, you know, kind of like shopping around and bouncing around. And, um, and then maybe she couldn't get that, you know, they, the new clinic, maybe they couldn't get her information. You know, from the states, uh, you know. So I'm wondering if that, how much of that played a part in in what you did, you know. And, and you're only doing yourself harm by that because you remember right. you're 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 getting you're thinking you're getting you're achieving what you want, but in the meantime, you're risking your life with that because now that doctor who's going to do that surgery do, do not have all the information that they need in order to be able to intervene when there's a problem. Yeah. And that's why I say it's also, you know, you have to do your research on the yeah. doctor. You have to also, and also the doctor has to do their research on the patient. Yeah. Dr. B, what's the average um, age range of your clients that come to see you? I want to say between 20s and 50s. 20s and, oh, as high as 50, okay. Yep, yeah, as high as 50s. Okay. Oh, you got some, some older ladies out there getting it right. Yeah, getting right, yeah, getting right. yeah. We're in the club doing a little two step. <laughs> get things, get things <laughs> lifted up. It's, it's, it's just it's Botox, it's IV drips. So there's a lot mm. of other yeah. services that we offer. So not necessarily the person is having surgery or doing anything surgical. They're seeing they're they're coming in just to maintain wellness. Mm. Is there a good time for a woman to let's say have a tummy tuck or some sort of you know, uh, relative to maybe another time, is there a good time if she's, if let's say she's, it's something that she's, uh, she's thinking of doing or considering, you know, is there a better time to do it? You know, I say it's the time that you feel that you're ready and you're doing it for yourself. As long as you're, you know, don't based on your, um, on you doing this for, to look like someone else, do it based on if you're ready, you're, you know, you, what you want to see, if you're, ha you know, you're ready, you know, you're, this is, you know, um, you've had your children, you want to now want to take care of you or, you know, you, you want, you want to get a jump start, jump start of your fitness goals. Because a lot of people, because remember, once you have the surgery, surgery is not it. Just having the surgery and that's it. And then you continue going back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's a lot of trauma to the, your body. So you don't want to just keep on just having surgery. Surgery is not, um, lifestyle is not, it's not just, you know, just to, um, maintain yourself. That's not the way surgery is to uh, accelerate it, but you have to maintain as far as healthy eating and, um, exercising and also, um, your body, you gotta, you know, cause you keep on doing that surgery, surgery to your, to your body. It's only, it's not gonna, it, you're gonna, you're gonna look small, but you could be a skin laxity is going to be very loose and you're not going to be happy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, have a question. we got a question from Marsha. Yeah. Yeah. She wants to know uh, what, right, did, uh, what, uh, what did you have done and how did it change your life? 
How did I figure that someone was going to ask that? So um, I have three kids. Um, after my three kids, I uh, before I turned 40, I wanted to be able to have a tummy tuck. And um, because, you know, with just with everything, age and everything. So I had my tummy tuck done. I had it overseas. And, um, and it was something for me. I wanted to be able to, when I looked in the mirror, that I was happy with what I seen. Um, and although my, my husband was very much against it, um, you know, but it was, it was about me. It was for me, you know, and I'm very happy that I did. And if I had to do it again, I'd do it again. <laughs> if I had, you know, because I was, ha I'm, I'm very happy with, with the person that I see in the mirror. So Dr. Okay. Let me ask you a question. So if somebody has like uh, one of the bypass surgeries or something like that, and they have like, they want should they will they will they get a tummy tuck after that? Because know that now they lost so much weight and they have everything like that. Yeah, they will get one up in the yes. arms and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. And and the probably the million dollar question a lot of people probably probably want to know is how much does some of this stuff cost? What's the price range and how can people pay for it? And is it payment plans, credit, or insurance on, insurance insurance and stuff like that? I'm just saying, you know, we got we got certain kind of folks watching. Is it a go yeah. on me? You know, can you can you put it on <laughs> can you put it on layaway? <laughs> <laughs> you can by saving it up until you got your money's right and go in and, and have the surgery. But all depends. It all depends when you have it. Who's the doctor? Obviously, you know, um, uh, if you're going, if you're doing it here, it's going to cost you more. That's just the way, you know, it is. You, it's going to cost you more if you're doing it here. If you're going overseas, it's going to be um, cheaper, but not you know you also got to factor the fact that you're traveling you're staying over there and you have to stay in a recovery house so it all adds up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no. so you might you might wind up paying over there what you would pay here by the time you pay for the stays and travel and everything you think right. is it is it that much of a statement or does it's it come not, out about the not, same probably not but then you also gotta you gotta factor like i said you gotta factor of not just the surgery you gotta factor as as far as your post-op care and i think sometimes some ladies um don't understand that they don't budget for that mm -hmm. well, okay. let me ask you this one question i've always been curious about when someone gives something let's say it's a breast enhancement or or uh, the, the glutamus maximus enhancement or whatever does mm -hmm. it feel natural or does it feel um synthetic i can, I, I, I can speak i can speak on that oh. <laughs> <laughs> from, from <what> perspective <laughs> long time ago i used to be in the long time used to be in the strip club bad dr b bad bad i was a bad man back then okay <laughs> okay so, so, so all right so two-part question how does it feel to the person itself and then the person that i guess is mm -hmm. i guess in a relationship with them so does someone lose sensitivity on certain parts of their body or it all depends. Sometimes you do. As far as if, you know, sometimes it's not guaranteed. So if you have breath enhancement, it's not breath argumentation. It's not gar guaranteed that you're going to have the sensation. Sometimes some people do lose it. But as far as um, it, it varies with everybody, you know, and it varies with the skills of the doctor. I mean, sometimes you can see a, 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 a woman naked. You'll never knew that she had surgery. Mm -hmm. you know, it's oh, all the, wow. the, you know, um, the skill of the doctor. Um the 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 individual how they heal, um, it all depends on how um, you know how their body how their body responds to the surgery. How long does it last? Yeah. Like, cause we used to always joke to say if if someone has you know breast augmentation and then they're eighty years old and they the breast has not moved or something like, how does mm -hmm. that is that another thing that just depends on the person? Well, now these days, before um, when they were doing the saline implants, they were saying ten years. Now you have different kind of implants technologies. So, um, so now it's a you know it, it all depends on how you know what they use, um, how the per how the person take care of their body. Um, but you know, you, more or less to say is if the per like if someone had a tummy tuck, it's going to if it's going to last if you if you if you maintain your wellness goal and, and you exercise and you eat healthy. But if you go back to the same, you know, as before, yeah, you're going to go back. You're going to, you're going to gain the weight. So it's not a magic mm -hmm. elixir. You have to do your part. You have to do your part. Yeah. So a question, we, question came up. We got a um, question Max. from Max. Yeah. Max, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, now, Max, Max John Patisse got a question. Um, They want to know, are men having surgeries? And if they are, what, what is the main surgery that men have? Men are having surgery. They're having um, abdominal etching. They're having liposuction. Um, mm. 
So that is something that you start, you know, you start seeing because, um, you know, again, looking at Instagram and, and, and get want to be buff and there's, there's ways of now accelerating and getting to that. So yes, mm-hmm. you do see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. so we saw Funkmaster Flex get his done. So you know, hopefully, hopefully, him as a celebrity and his known won't make it such a taboo for people like trying to give the ultimate goal. So I hope, hope correct, you know. correct, and it shouldn't yeah. be. Because guess what? Yeah. This is, has been going on for many, many, many years. We're just getting on it now. Now, or we're just, and some people are just afraid of talking about it. But it's, it's, it's not. It shouldn't be. It's if this is what you want, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Doc, I want to go back. I want to go back to something like this: the the P injection, right? Real quick. So, what's the difference <laughs> on the, the the P injection to the the little blue magic pill that you know that we see in the commercial? So, the P injection it, it sounds crazy because the blue pill they always see white people in tubs about to have mm-hmm. sex, you know. So, so with the P injection, how how does that what how strong is it compared to the little blue pill? <laughs> <laughs> um it is um well i i'm being told that it's it's very good um, oh you didn't did you give it to your husband no 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 has any of your clients <laughs> has any of your clients had the ejections and it got stuck like no, 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 at all, at all. He, just, he won't let no needle come th- close to him he's like oh okay no because the thing is i don't know if it's like the injection like you get the injection, so then it stays that way. So you just walk around with it all the time, just staying that way. No, no, no. So, <laughs> so the peach shot can um, basically the injections are done in multiple parts, certain areas in the the shaft, and also in the um, the base. The base, you see? Okay. And um, out. what it does, it helps. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds painful. Oh my gosh, I'm cringing. Not really. We're using diabetic needles, very small insulin needles, very okay. small needles, and it's not painful per se. Um, it's it it's I think it's the anxiety because when uh, uh, you know uh, of getting it done. Um, but what it does is it helps as far as keeping her uh, erection. It okay. helps as far as getting her erection, and that's what some men are struggling with. And that is the reason why they were on Viagra or on um, taking medication. And this is more natural because this is them. This is the blood. We're, we're, we're spinning that blood and using that platelet-rich um, plasma that has growth factors that helps that. Okay. Yeah. So, so, it's, so it's not a one-time shot. It's like a recurring thing or something annually. like that? You can, yeah. It's an annually once a year. Yeah. I had, I had, blood, oh, I had hey. blood spinning before. Every woman does it too, just so you know. Women, women do it. Oh, oh, time, 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 time. I know we go. I know producer Jamie trying to get me on time. Explain what women get. Why they need it for? They need it for as far as dryness, because as we go in, um, as we start getting to the (laughs) menopausal age, they need it for the juices. They need their juices flowing. That's right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is it something? One more thing. Is it something called the skinny shot? No, that's not the skinny shot. The skinny shot is lipotropic, so it helps as far as it's no. <laughs> based on amino acids and B12 that helps as far as to lose weight. Okay, I'm getting yeah, I'm D, getting men, men don't men don't want nothing skinny down there. We don't want our things. No, 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 I know. Totally different. Totally different. Uh, totally different. Now, now, I'm about to be a heroin, a heroin. I'm about to OD on the skinny shot. I need a thousand skinny shots. So, Doc, before we go, before we go, any um anything you want us to touch on? Like, how can people get in touch with you? And you know. How can it like what's how to reach out to you and where you're located and all that stuff? So we're located in Sunset Park. Um uh Plasti Munakis, uh Forever Juvenus is at uh 517 53rd Street in Sunset Park. We're expanding, so um we have a lot, a lot to offer in the next couple of months. So we do laser, we do IVs, we do uh, body contouring, post ops. So there's a lot of um, services that we offer, and more importantly, we um we're not, you know, we're here to take that journey and we know it because we have done it ourselves. And that's very important as far as being able to share um, because some of the ladies that are thinking of doing it or that have done it, they're, you know, they're afraid. They, you know, so we know we from experience, we can share our experience of um, what to expect. Mm. Wow. Doc, but I'll tell you one thing. You're going to have more black men lined up for the P shot than the COVID-19 shot. 
Oh man! You have a, you have wow. a line going around the corner for the peace shot. They're gonna say, "I'll catch COVID. I'll get the COVID. I don't care about the virus. Give me that peace shot." Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Some people, I, some people might get a line twice. Yeah. <laughs> so, Doctor, yeah. thank you so much for coming on today. You was a great, great, great guest today. Thank you for informing the people. They can put it real simple so people can get it. We truly appreciate you. We love you, Doc B. And I uh, hope to see you soon when COVID ends in person again. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. All right. Thanks. Take care. Yo, All right. that, P, that, was... that P shot is going to change the game. Kid, they about to get another game. About to get some old players back in the game. <laughs> facts, facts. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to like, I, I, shit, everybody going to throw their hat back in the game. What's, what the chicken wing said? Okay. <laughs> chicken wing said he needs the P shot. And it's going to be Got a little straight arm. We ain't gonna be walking around like this all day with that little arm, man. Yo, yo, dude's gonna be using their stimulus checks to get the P shot. (laughs) I know, I know, I know. Yeah, uh, producer Jam in the chat. Can you tell me if Doc Bell is back? So I know not. I'm not sure. Oh man, Jamie, funny. Is she back? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, all right. So we keep on going with it, man. We keep on going with it. So, um, but so what? 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 What did you guys take away? What's the big, biggest thing you took away from this? Uh, I mean, there was a lot to take away from it. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll say this. Um, what I thought was interesting was uh, she said that her husband didn't want her to do it. And uh, you all are, well, married married men and about to be a married man. I'll, I'll say this. Um, that would seem like, although you're an individual within a marriage, I would think that would be um, a relationship decision. That's what I would think. Uh, I would just think mm-hmm. theoretically. Um, what do you guys think about that? That's definitely something that you would discuss, you know, um, as a couple, I would say, I'm not going to lie. I might be a little, I might be like him. I might be a little spooky about it. You know what I mean? Just, I'm just yeah. kind of funny about elective surgeries, period. You know, I do mm-hmm. love my wife, obviously, and I care very much for her well-being and everything. So I don't necessarily know that I would, nece- you know, be like, oh, well, go ahead and get it. Because, you know, it makes me, you feel good. I get it. But, you know, don't right. do it for me, you know. So I don't know. Um, but we would definitely have to discuss it, man. We would definitely have to discuss it. You know? Yeah, I'm all for whatever makes people happy and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, if it's going to make you happy and get you to your goals, and some things are yeah. some things are done for health reasons, too. Like, you know, when you talk about the, the bypass surgeries and stuff like that, too. Like, you know, people blood pressure, sugar issues, and stuff like that. So uh, whatever makes people happy, I just know my man Chicken Wing is going to get this pea shot in his arm. So I just can't I can't wait to play catch with him. Chicken wing, don't be trying to blow me up like that. I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't, don't you can't tell time. women what to do with their bodies. This is what. Yeah, it is. you can't. You can't. Uh-huh. I'm saying you can't. No, yeah. but I, but yeah. I think that go. I think it's a two way street. Like if you come home and tell your wife, you know, I'm thinking about getting a tattoo on my face. That's mm-hmm. not gonna go over well. I mean, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it's still your face, but I can imagine, you know. You probably right. say you can I mean, get matching tattoos or something. Yeah. You don't know what you had to walk out. Right, right. but it, I, I would think it'd be something agreed upon. That's, you know. But, but yeah. uh, you I know, think, I, I think this is the only time I'll say this. Chicken wing may be right. We go ahead. Nah. <laughs> so, so, listen, we got, we, got, we got our next guest in. This sister promised me she could make my hair grow back. I hope so. She can. She, I hope so, because I, I want to get my weight back. <laughs> I'm going to start spinning. I want to get my Morris Chestnut look on their asses back. I'm going to be in these streets. Now, but our next guest very intelligent sister. I got to know her over the last uh, few days here, and I can't wait to see what she could bring and help out and talk about what the stuff that she does for people and how she helps them reach their goals. So, Sammy, Jamie, can you bring in Dr. Bell, please? Dr. Bell. Oh, Dr. Bell. Dr. 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 Bell still in the office. Oh, yeah. Here we take over the office. Dr. Hey, Dr. Bell. Bell. Hey, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. Oh, there she I'm here. Hey, Dr. Hey. Bell, how you doing? Hi, guys. How you doing, sis? How you doing? We see, you, we see you still in the office. Am, You're still doing I your thing. It's my business day. I'm so excited. I was, guess what? I had to leave the camera to jump over there to do some lips. Some oh, lips? Okay. Can you show us the here. My patients, they wait for me. They'll stay all night. They still there? <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. It's her first time coming. Follow me on Instagram for two years. She's a beautiful 31 year old. And okay. she is getting her lips done for the very first time. Oh wow! wow. I would, I, I wish we could see you do that. That would be great. Well, I, I, I thought about that, but I, I didn't want to interrupt. But you can see her after. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, so, so you already did it right now? I just did. When you when you were looking for me, I was over there. I jumped in the room to do her procedure. 
Okay. Well, you're the hardest uh, working woman in show business right now. Yeah, man. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The grind on stop. I'm looking at it's eight o'clock at night. She's still grinding. Yeah. yeah. That's so, amazing. It sounds duty, really simple. Duty call. <laughs> duty call. So, Dr. Bell, tell, tell people a little bit about yourself, your background, and how'd you get, get into the business of what you do? Okay. So, uh, I guess I'll begin with um, my education after undergrad. So, you go to college right. for four years. And then I went to Meharry Medical College and I studied uh, dentistry and oral surgery. And then I was like, hmm, I want to do a lot more. So I was um, doing a lot of oral surgery cases on my patients and implants and uh, really in-depth surgical procedures like bone grafting. And like Dr. B mentioned at PRP, we did a lot of grafting and surgical grafting. And then there were like issues that would occur so things would be a little asymmetrical and not so even and then you would restore a mouth or the oral cavity with bone and structurally like a patient still needed some fullness so we with aesthetics were able to add fullness and soften someone's look so when you think of um i'll give you a great example an edentulous patient which is someone that has no teeth they look very sunken in Right, like, the, like you think of their mouth, and it begins to just fall. Crackheads, crackheads in the eighties. Crackheads in the eighties. Go ahead. <laughs> that image, right? Yes. So, how do you restore it? Sometimes, you know, just the actual addition of an appliance doesn't do it solely. So now, with injectables, we get to lift cheeks. We get to you know, fill in voids and lines like nasolabial lines, give people fullness and chins. Um, I do a very popular procedure now. You guys were asking, like, what's popular out there? And we're talking about butt enhancements, toning up bodies. We have an M sculpt machine. But now we have the addition of threads in the industry. So we place surgical threads, and they actually, I can do a facelift, and it's non invasive. And um, it begins to lift and tighten. And I think one of our best examples, I've treated quite a bit of celebrities. Um, we've done from Love and Hip Hop, Yandy and Jonathan, and we have some fun, great patients. Um, one on Medina Molina. And uh, I actually should send her a congratulations. She just became a grandmother today. And um, yes, so it, those procedures are very popular in the industry. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, these, um, our clientele, our patients need a quick fix and a quick lift and they can't afford the time. They don't have a lot of downtime, you know, they have to be camera ready. Yeah. So we do a lot of procedures that, um, you know, if they were to opt for a full facelift, mm -hmm. the healing time is like for a procedure like that. And then there's also like just the evidence of getting work done. So they like doing procedures, but they're subtle and you don't really know what they had done. So there's a lot of speculation behind those procedures, but they're great. Doc, wow. Dr. Bell, are we trying to um, beat father time? Are we, are we competing with age? Or, uh, is that something we're trying to do? Uh, because I always wonder where, what is the end game? You know, you know, ultimately, you know, we do age and things change. Are we trying to prevent that? Or are we trying to slow that down? Or are we trying to circumvent that process in that? What do, what do you see? What do people want when they come to you? Um, I, because, you know, I had a discussion with someone today saying, you know, if, if you're if you're if you're 50, you can't look 25 or if you're 30, you can't look 20. Is, is that something people are trying to do or is it just slight enhancement? What, what do you think? People are definitely trying to beat this aging process. Why not? <laughs> uh, How's yeah. that going? Yeah, so here's the thing. We have, think about our parents. They were not privy to procedures like this. It was either you opt for surgery or you just looked your age or beyond that. And nowadays, we have a nice alternative. So you get to, listen, I've been in private practice now solo for 20 years. And my claim to fame is, you know, that I maintained my look for this long. So 
we learn with all of these nuances in aesthetic medicine how to restore our looks, how to restore your skin, how to rejuvenate it, how to resurface it. Um, these procedures are essential and really, really important. And we're learning a lot about how to not reverse the aging process, but how to you know maintain your look. So I think that my practice puts an emphasis on people looking like them, their best selves. Not everyone looking like the same person. So, you know, we want you to look like yourself, but a more restored, youthful version of yourself. Gotcha. So, so speaking of youth, right, you and I talked this week. You say you got something that could bring this back. Can I get my 360 ways back? <laughs> oh, I kind of remember this conversation that we had. Um, I think you were telling me, I was telling you, you know, I pledged back in the day, aka like our new yeah, yeah. vice president. All right, Hollywood. happy happy founders day, happy bladed founders day, happy bladed founders day. <laughs> so, I'm on blue fly. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so she, we actually we do a hair restoration procedure. And so this is nothing new. So let me just tell you guys a little bit about how my practice segued into from doing procedures like I was mentioning, like phone grafting into more Medispa style services, including hair restoration. So it's a natural progression. It's not just something that's gimmicky and I just decided to wake up and do one day. Um, so with, with your blood, we know due to the advent of stem cell research now that you can restore and revitalize areas in your, in your skin and your hair follicles all over the body with athletes when they're injured. Um, right on the playing field, they're given injections of plasma a lot of times to deal with the pain. Um, so this is pla plate, platelet rich plasma is not new um, and is used for multiple procedures and mo more than likely to just help restore um, different areas of the body. So when it comes to the hair follicles, if you waited a very long time, it's not guaranteed it becomes a more difficult procedure but if you're going through the process of shedding it's a good time to start get receiving treatments what we do is we extract blood usually from the arm from your brachial plexus and then we centrifuge it in a machine and it separates the red blood cells your rbcs from your plasma which is rich in proteins and that's the good stuff so it looks yellow when we inject it and we take that and we inject it I do. I love this procedure and it's very popular. It's all over the, the face and we do a lot of facial tightening with it. When you have bags under your eyes and they're gray and dark, we can make them look brighter and plump. Um, we can plump out lines on the mid face and just restore your face. So when you smile, you don't, your skin texture looks very smooth, no wrinkles. Mm -hmm. um, if you do the procedure over time, um, meaning like every couple of months or you do a few of them within a year's time frame, you actually start to extend the tissue. And so it builds collagen and it does make you look more youthful. Guess what? You can take the same procedure and inject <laughs> that plasma in the scalp and then energize your hair follicles. And we sort of like in the industry term it like waking them up. So they begin to die and they become dehydrated. And then we are able to restore them. So I even like on our Instagram feed, we have a picture of someone that I treated right before the pandemic. Within four months, he sent me the photo. He had a full head of hair. And we caught him. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, doctor, um, we have a question here. Someone's asking, um, you know, we've had some doctors, they continue to give the patients uh, additional treatments. Uh, even when they can obviously see that they've had too much done, you know, so uh, and they're looking uh, looking like another person, little Kim and Michael Jackson. Right? Oh, you don't think they're so, cute? They're cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, what, what about that? What, 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 why do you think that happens? Why do you think that continues? I mean, happen? I think that people tend to go to someone who reflects what they want to look like. Mm -hmm. 
I don't knock anyone else or their work. Um, I do like um, using a gradual approach. Um, I would consider myself a more conservative um, injector. And I definitely customize my treatments to the person and their needs. So I get a lot of requests, but I stick to um, what I know based on research and based on um, my experience. And I think it's very important that you get people based on their um, skin texture, their age, their um, mental, oh, oh, and medical history, their medical history is pertinent. So mm. everyone can't receive everything. But um, I try to customize it based on their needs. And I explain that to them thoroughly. So I really don't have issues with people deviating from my treatment plan um, or going with a, a very exaggerated, unnatural look. Um, I, I, I notice that um, I think that what you so a lot of times that what we see like on social media, it's filtered, it's artificial, it's inflated. That stuff is not even real. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people get obsessed with things. I'll give you a good example. I have a patient that's really popular. She has a number two hit show now on TV um, under power, which is uh, Darcy and Stacey Silva's show. They're from 90 Day Fiance. So she filters everything. She's a friend of mine. She loves to filter her pictures. And people want love her look. Like they want to look like her to some extent. But I, you know, we have to remind them because we get patients that come in because she comes here. And they'll say that they, you know, they want to come here because Darcy came here. But she filters herself. Like it, we know this. Everyone knows it publicly. She discusses it. And we have to remember <laughs> that, um, you know, the Kardashians and the people that we sort of put on a pedestal um, pay a lot of people to make them look good. So it isn't, there is an exaggerated perception um, of who they really are or what they really look like. And uh, if you keep That's that in mind, then you'll, you'll, I think you'll, come up with you'll understand that it's more important to maintain your your look but there's nothing wrong with tweaking slight imperfections dr bell i got a lot of lot of stripper friends i had a long time ago a lot of, lot of stripper friends right long time ago. And, okay. and some of them and some of them are older like i'm almost 50. some of them some are older now they get all okay. the stuff they look right in the face look young like you but their hands look old is there anything they can do for their hands <laughs> We do. The hands look. The hands look real like a witch. You know. Like, yeah. Like, oh my god. What so do they have for the hands? Have, can I have a glycolic moisturizer? <laughs> uh oh, you got, you got what? Product line. Oh, no, we were talking about all your products. I might need some. I'm gonna need all them products. I'm gonna. I, I'm coming to see you. I'm gonna get this back. You have to. I'm gonna tell you about this one product. Well, D, it might be too late. Now. I know. I know. What? <laughs> What's for the hands? What's for the hands? What we got here? I'm, my stripper friends need them bad. They're 55, 52 years old. They need them bad. Okay. So our product, <laughs> this product, I'm so sorry. You guys are hilarious. This product was just built, featured in Us Magazine, U, uh, well, I'm sorry, US Weekly, In Touch Magazine, Life and Style Magazine, and Star. Okay. So the product was released because of its popularity, because it works. So literally within days, like acid in it. Um, you Typically when you hear about this, it's done as a chemical peel procedure, which our estheticians do, but when you can take it home, and it's the highest concentration that you can take home from a medical office, it what it does is, we all know about that, it's winter time, right? So we all have like that, those ashy ankles, and that bad mm -hmm. skin, and those yeah. rough, Okay, okay. Yeah, we hey, we ain't riding to get our feet done, so we're not one of those guys. <laughs> you use this. So you use this every day for two weeks, I guarantee you somebody's going to notice. And it's not just you. Mm. And what I like about the product is that we're just unfamiliar with the things that work for us. And I love melanated skin because we have issues. And mm -hmm. our issues are not always addressed. So I make sure that across the spectrum, I have, we have a product line that's for every shade, color, ethnicity, skin type. And there are things that you can use for your skin, dry skin, necks included for women, hands, 
it's very important, especially during the pandemic, when they say wash your hands, wear a mask, that you use something essentially that restores moisture. But what's good about glycolic is it takes off a layer of skin. So guess what? You build new skin. It rejuvenates your skin, so it looks younger. And that's great for those, what'd you say, those extra for friends? They're yeah, they're, they're, they're my long time ago, Doc Bell, long time. I'm, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but let me is there is there some is there a particular uh, entertainer that people come to you and say they want to look like? I hear a lot of people that get to around the fifty year mark that say they want to look like Jennifer Lopez. She seems to now be the person that people say she looks great at her age, and I, I hear that a lot. Do people come to you and say, "Hey, make me look like this person or that person"? Do you get requests? Can someone bring you a picture and say, "Can you do this"? I do. I still actually, I get some JLo's, not so many, but I get a few of those. I get a lot of lip pictures. So people will come in. The most common one used to be Kim and Khloe Kardashian. I would say they were about like 50-50. Now it's Kylie. Um, I don't get a lot of that anymore because people are very trusting. So they say, what do you feel is appropriate for my lip? And that is the procedure that I do. And usually they'll say, I trust you, which is such a compliment because it wasn't always like that um, in this industry. And they will allow me to design their lips based on how they present and what I feel is more appropriate for their facial frame. Um, so that's really important. But yeah, so there are um, a lot but the ones that are just still kind of like a reigning queens. And then we were discussing in the office to get together. We were discussing in the office to get today Black China. Her face is looking good these days. I don't know if anyone knows. Who? Whose face? Whose face? Black face? Oh, Black China. Oh, yeah? Yeah, okay. Black oh. China. Yeah. So, 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 I don't know. You're, you're, okay. No, you guys are watching her. She has the only hands. You know you've seen that. I, I, I don't <laughs> allegedly that I have subscribed to a few phone fans pages. Allegedly, uh, but, okay. hey, that's, allegedly, that's allegedly. I so no, no. <laughs> so, so let me ask you: What other products that you have that you um that you could, uh, tell people about that you use? Like, I know I saw on your page you do something with teeth bleach and whitening and stuff like that. Any other product you want to tell us about? So yes. So the whitening, the teeth whitening is popular. Veneers are popular. Um, and another product that I love that put me on the map is my lip plumper. So lip, lip plumper. <laughs> Which oh, wow. we, we, we talking about the face lips, right? I'm just making sure. I know you I'm just making sure we're in the right lips. Okay, go so ahead. This makes your lips look <laughs> fuller. Oh, fuller. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So the way that this works is it tingles a little bit when you apply it. That's how you know it's a plumper, a real mm -hmm. one. And it has hyaluronic acid in it. So that's something naturally occurring in your skin, in your lips. And the acid actually is in my lip filler. So when I plump, when I inject you, there's hyaluronic acid in it. If you apply it on the outside surface, you know, our skin is porous. We absorb it. When you absorb the actual molecule, it attracts water. So you keep moisture longer, your skin. So for instance, lips tend to have like little fine lines. It helps to smooth all of that. So what I do is, um, cause you wear a mask at work. Well, I wear a mask at work all day. Now everybody's wearing a mask all day. You have these little, dr my lips get very dry from wearing a mask. I apply this in the morning as soon as I wake up. And then I allow my lips to absorb it. I don't apply it again. It actually is a gloss, so it looks really nice by itself. And then I can literally go the duration of the day with my lips just looking smooth and full because I saw lips all day, right? Mm -hmm. Part of my image. So, look, doctor. Where can, where can people order your product from? How, how, can they get, how can they get your products and stuff like that? You can get that. Uh, you can go view my Instagram page, which is the lip doctor two with two E's. Mm -hmm. And it's all one word. And all of our products are there listed on our product page. And West asks and again. Kind of like, we have a full skincare line. Uh, Wes asks again, our friend Wes, aka Chicken Wing, asks again about the what's the name of the hand cream? Because I guess he has older <laughs> ladies. He has older ladies, and he'll make sure their hands are looking right when they touch his little arm. When they, when they touch his little he arm. Said, he 
He was thinking about those ankles. That's why he wanted to care. <laughs> does, it help, does it help women to have cankles? Does it help women to have cankles? Does it make them smaller? No, this doesn't reduce the size. <laughs> this smooths the skin texture. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. So, yes, no, seriously. And men and women can use it. Anyone, yes, so anyone can use it. However, this is for the body. We have one specific, specifically for your face. It's a much smaller um, container. And, but for mm -hmm. the body, which is, it's difficult to find and very uncommon. And this is a yeah. lot. Um, so it does last quite a while. I would say like up to like four to five months, oh, but okay. it's great during the winter. Like it, it's women, you know, the women are getting yeah, everything done. They're doing body chemical peels, they're evening out their skin, getting rid of bikini lines, you know, making everything look smooth and soft. Mm -hmm. so, Can I ask they, you one last one? I'm sorry. Us. I just want to ask you one last one. This, this may be very, very important for people that are, uh, that can't get to you and they just need to go to someone or they want to go to someone, what should they look out for? Because there's a lot of people out there that are not licensed. A lot of people out there that are, um, deceiving people what yeah. should they look for to know that a place you should not deal with mm. um how do you how do you test for authenticity uh okay so i had a case today it's all actually on my instagram story um and a young lady presented and she unfortunately had treatment done and um had um i would say her cheeks treated and her chin and unfortunately the product spread and it migrated and she has residual inflammation and she has been swollen and does not look like her deformed for the past three weeks so i do not um because it's it's not my job publicly to um discuss anyone else or their treatment but what i do is and I, I i also don't enjoy working on top of someone else's work so and i but i do receive a lot of botched cases because i publicize them through my instagram story so i share real life stories what we do on a day-to-day -day basis and bruce am i not even no. No. I, think you know, her. I think we lost i think we lost the fee one of the other people didn't want her to give out the secret yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Doctor Bell, I wanted to get to that. I want to, I want to see the lady lips too. Oh, yeah. she's froze. Oh, she's yeah. frozen. Producer Jamie says no. She she's just no. She's giving an example of what happened to the lady. See, okay. it's just like you just, it's just still. Oh, she back. Oh, this oh, okay. Yo, look wow. at the surgery I had. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to advertise that. Oh man, yeah, yeah we don't want to advertise that because then nobody that gets the shit. <laughs> oh man, I think that's informative. I think I, I, I'll tell you this though. I think I do think it's kind of scary where we're going though in mm -hmm. um, cosmetics and like surgery and stuff. I think mm -hmm. it's a little frightening because I mean, after a while, we're gonna be robots. It look like I don't, I don't know, but um, it, but at least if you're gonna do it, you know, do go to someone reputable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, you're going that, to do it, you should definitely yeah. go to somebody that's reputable. Yeah, because it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. People are losing their lives. I mean, you know, uh, with, mm -hmm. with people that are just because it's such a money grab for some people that, you know, uh, people just have these fake degrees and things and they'll just go up and yeah. uh, hurt yeah. people yeah. with, with yeah. no recourse. Mm -hmm. I, so, I, I think I think when it becomes a problem is when, like we were talking before, when people just overdo it, they just keep going back, getting procedures over and over and over and mm -hmm. over again. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost that's, like they're doing it just because they can. You know what I yeah, mean? Sometimes yeah. I, just, I heard it's addictive. I mean, there are people yeah. because there are people that we know, and I'm not going to mention their names, but in entertainment, where it just like, well, some people already mentioned it on the chat, but I mean, it's just it looks. You know, I always want to ask, do you like the way you look now? Like, if you could go back, do you really like what I mean? Some people are uh, two and three shades lighter than they were. Some mm -hmm. people, they just almost look disfigured. And I'm saying eventually, I don't know that there's any more skin left on your, your frame to, to do anything. You know what I mean? It looks, it yeah. really looks, like, yeah. you know, and, 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 I, and I think part of it is, and, and this is what I've been trying to get at all night, is if there is something internal, unhappy, I don't know that the external fixes it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know that that fixes yeah. it. And I think I think people need to try to figure out because yeah. if you're unhappy inside. Yeah, you're broken inside. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if the, yeah. the exterior is going to help. It may have the world. It may deceive the world and make them look at you different for a moment. 
you know, I'm sure we all want to look good in our own right for whatever that that looks like. You know what I mean? But um, I, I just I, I just hope people really, really, you know, take into consideration uh, what this means to go through some of these procedures. You know, because I don't oh, know. Oh, we got a back. She's back. Oh, the back. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Doc. There you go. Okay, you back. Oh no, you don't want to see me. There we go. Hey, there we go. All right. Cool. All right. We lost you for a second. Somebody, like Kelvin said, the haters were coming in. They didn't want you to reveal the secrets and stuff. They haters. were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, what, what do men yeah. come mostly to see her for? Yeah, that's what I would say. That's the question I want to ask. Men? What men? Yeah. What are your biggest? What is your biggest? Um, um, for what is your biggest procedure that you do for men? Uh. Right now, men love facials. I okay. um, they love teeth whitening. Mm -hmm. Um, Botox usually because their wives want Botox, them to get it done. And we call it Brotox. Brotox. Okay, <laughs> that's good. That's good marketing. That's and, great marketing. Great marketing. And believe it or not, number one, and all my male friends harass me for this one is body. Mm -hmm. mm. They love getting those abs done, the M sculpting, mm -hmm. and the cool hey, sculpting. Hey, I'm, I'm coming over there. I'm coming. Over. <laughs> what is that exactly? What is that exactly? I'm sure we might have to come there. a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, you guys are to... loving here. You have so much fun here. My Can staff we... is still here. They won't even leave. They love. I see. It. I see them. Yeah, tell, yeah. Tell, tell, tell them. Tell them. We love them all, man. But they were so help. Sean, your assistant is a great, great person. A great, great, great person. Oh, oh, that's 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 I know the M stone. That's, 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 you know, incorporated these fees into um, their fee schedule. So unfortunately, no. we cannot <laughs> bill for a lot of them. Okay. But um, what we do offer is financing through Care Credit. Care Credit is really, really popular. Um, you can use it for any medical office. I mean, it ranges from everything from a like vet's office to a podiatrist's office, and anything that your insurance wouldn't pay for, they handle. So that's a great option for patients. And, um, you know, basically we attempt to just help you with your needs. And if you need multiple procedures, then we do um, packaging for patients. So we give them options geared towards their treatments. And if they opt for the package, then they get like a special pricing. Real, real quick, is your patient still there that you filled in the lips? Are they still there? She has, she stepped out, right? The last uh, patient. Uh, well, Derek, okay. Derek had a question about what the, oh, um, was, the, the app, was the app thing. Derek, what was that? No, no I was just wondering because I mentioned something like M sculpting before. I was just kind of curious what exactly that what was. Yeah, I think so, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. If okay, so this is really cool. So I'm gonna explain this to you because you know what? Even for me, I I wasn't a believer. It took me a long time in practice to really figure out which forms of technology were Unofficial. appropriate for certain areas of the body and really gave a true response without like altering or damaging an area or causing trauma. So for me, you know, I'm, I don't just buy things because, you know, a rep comes in here or Dr. Such and Such down the street has it. I, I get very engaged. I go to a lot of, um, I take a lot of courses. I'm a lecturer and a mentor to thousands of doctors around the, around the country. I'm actually, I teach courses. So I have a doctor, she just flew in today from Memphis and we're teaching her this week on our procedures. We help to educate through my practice. So with the procedure, like when it comes to body, um, you know, you have to be very careful. I live a very like, holistic lifestyle so i eat organic food and i work out every day at five o'clock in the morning and so anyone that watches my instagram kind of sees the progression of my day and i don't incorporate things that i don't believe in in my own office or that i wouldn't use on myself so with cryo sculpting which is when you use like or a cool sculpting you use a cold laser 
I, I had this image in my mind that like this isn't natural. Like the body doesn't can't really you can't denature fat like adipose tissue to sell. So I had a hard time implementing that in my office. And I, for a long time, I was um, reliant on radio frequency treatments, which is it mimics what I do in the gym. So when you work out hard, you know, you actually burn fat and you get your body gets hot and builds heat. And then you sweat it out and it goes through your lymphatic system and you urinate it out, right? So that's how you lose weight. Well, so what I learned about cool sculpting is you can accelerate that and it denatures it faster and you do the same, your body does the same thing. So I have patients that will do the cool sculpting machine and as soon as they leave, they'll <laughs> and they're like, Dr. Mel, I had to, I had to like pee as soon as I left your office I, or I was doing the number two all night. And so it promotes the, the bodies. It just accelerates the process and it promotes the same effect. And then M sculpting, which is awesome. So what it does is when you work out, like I do these sit-ups and every time I do sit-ups on Instagram, I'm like, here we go. Like my worst procedure of the day, I'm about to do these sit-ups. What it does is it pulses on the muscle and it basically replicates you doing steps like literally thousands within minutes. And it, it, it doesn't hurt, but it, you know, puts pressure on the muscle. Like the patient feels it. We had three people on that machine today and it's very effective. They all left like really tight. They could feel it. You do have to do all these procedures in a sequence. So it's not one and done. So if you have like, if you don't have, you're not gonna dedicate yourself and put some time into it and marry that procedure, don't bother because then you're not gonna get the result. You'll have it, it'll last for a day or two and then it's gone. Um, it's just like working out. You don't work out one day and then, you know, turn into, you know, a hoarder the next day. The, se the, se the sexy D. That's what they want to turn. Yeah. Everybody, want, yeah. everybody yeah. want to be like big. Everybody want to be like big Papa. So, doc, so yeah. Dr. Bell, tell everybody again. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be like Papa. So, tell <laughs> tell everybody again where they can find you at on your Instagram page. Your page is lit. I mean, and I know people go. This person, this, this person that you about to have that you had there today, her stuff will probably be on your page in, in a short minute because I know how your team does. And stuff of course. Like so, it is. tell everybody once again how, how to follow you, your website, your phone number, where they can get your products, everything. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, our major platform is on Instagram and our, um, our name on Instagram is the lip doctor. My name on everything is the lip doctor. And, um, you can remember it easily because Megan the stallion spells her name the same way. The Megan the stallion. So it's with two E's. Um, cause along, sometimes along your professional career, people steal your name. So you have to switch it up a little bit so we added two e so i am the lip doctor one word and um you, not only are do we have an instagram handle we are located on all social media platforms but very active on there as well as youtube so our youtube page features my lifestyle as well as a procedure with celebrities um monthly and our products are also all you have to do is do that link in bio on that Instagram page and you can find our entire skincare line, which is like I said, complements every skin. And we have a full makeup line. Oh, cool. Dr. Bell, once again, I want to thank you so much for coming on, educating people, letting us know that they are products for people that have melanated skin like us and stuff like that. And that you're gonna get me skinny and I'm gonna have hair. I can't <laughs> wait. You know, I don't have no gray hair, doc. So I don't want you to bring it back. I get gray hair on the top and it'll be dark in the face. I don't don't do that to me. So I you know, won't. Truly, I promise. I, promise. I truly appreciate you and your team. They're great. Ace on and everything like that. Okay. So <laughs> we love you guys. All right. Thank you. And I had a great thank, time. And thank, thank you for being on. Doc, thanks for being on, Doctor Bell. You're yeah. welcome. And we're gonna and we're gonna get you a shirt so you can wear a shirt one day where you're working out or something like that. All right. I will, and I'll tell you <laughs> when I'm wearing it. Thank you. Okay, Appreciate great, it. All great. right. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. Night. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. That was that was fun. That was very Indeed. educational, man. Yeah, man. I got a question. Go ahead, bro. When you put um a procedure on layaway and then you don't pay for it, how do you get it back? <laughs> Good question. How do you get it back? How would you get it back? So, like basically you get your breast done. Do they come in, they knock on your door, and they take the breast back? 
Yo, listen, I might be the Brett's collector. <laughs> Yo, because I'm sitting yeah. here thinking be about. Repo, man? I'm, I'm thinking be the about repo. being the Brett's repo, dude. Yo, I could, yeah. I could be, the, I could be, the, I could the be. The, 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 I, 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 I call my instead of repo man, I call myself the titty taker. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, nah, but yeah. that stuff is, is pretty interesting, man. Yeah, what yeah, they, yeah, yeah. What the things that they can do now, you know what I'm saying? It's just amazing, you know. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. well, Yo, so yeah. listen, we got our next guest, right? This this guy does it the old fashioned way, like you know, we make. He wants to get you in the gym. He wants to make sure you're eating right. He wants to get your muscles right. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. he said he can help me lose my man titties and get me so uh, get me look like a uh, Lou Ferrigno. So uh, that'd be wow. amazing if you could do that. So you know, but Jamie, wow. bring it on. Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Rob. What you want to say? No, I'm just saying you don't want to look like Lou Ferrigno. That's that's oh, all right, all right, right, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, it's too big. Yeah, it's too big. It's I, too I, big. I, I, I look at you need that. You need that needle too. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But this guy doesn't, he does no needles. I, I knew him for a long, long, long time. So, mm -hmm. Jamie, bring in our next guest, the trainer, Leon. Leon. What's, up, what's, what's going on, up, bro? What's up, man? What's up, brother? Thank you man, for waiting for us, man. man. We got a little, we had some technical difficulties with our glass. <laughs> so, you know, we're gonna make sure. I'm glad you was patient with us, brother. And it's patient. okay. And listen, I might call him Leon. I know him as Poppy. So, uh, sometime I might slip in this interview. I'm just telling people now. This is the same person when I say Poppy. That's Leon. <laughs> so hey. welcome brother welcome so thank you thank you for having me thank you man listen man welcome man so leon you did it the old-fashioned way like with your workout regimens and stuff like that what 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 do you tell people when they first come meet you and they look like me and they want to get like sexy like you know like uh like a uh, you know chadwick or somebody like that how, how what do you first tell them well the first thing i tell them right off the back um that uh, this is uh, it's a journey. I, you know, if you look in, well, you know, I train mostly women. So, like, especially in the beginning, I used to get, like, a lot of people that would inquire about working with me. They would tell me something like, oh, can I lose 15 pounds in three weeks? And mm -hmm. I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm not the trainer for you. You know, I'm looking for people who are looking to make a lifestyle change, not, oh, I want to lose 20 pounds because I'm about to go on vacation. I need people who are dedicated, who are going to be consistent, and really, really want to change their life. Like those are quality clients, and I'm looking for client retention. So if you're just going to be around for two weeks, it's not really worth it. I'll do it because at the end of the day, I work for myself and I need to make money. But I, I try to make it very clear to them that you're not going to really get the results that you want. Unless they smoke, crack. unless they smoke crack and they go run in the gym. Oh, somebody background. <laughs> you know, they, they smoke crack, they go run in the gym. They get run, they run from police while they smoking the crack. They might get down to fifteen pounds. They might, they <laughs> might, they just might. And, and, and Mr. D, you know, I used to work at Pennsylvania Ave, so I'm pretty sure there's a couple of people in there like that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm gonna something about Pennsylvania Ave in a minute, but we gonna keep on going with this. I'm gonna bring this up before before the, before the night is over. We worked in the hood, so it's like it's some funny stories, like. <laughs> So um, I know a lot of some people say the, the best way to lose weight first starts in the kitchen. So you can you tell absolutely. people, can you explain that to people, what, what people when they say yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the hardest part about going to the gym, especially if you're working with a trainer, and I also tell this to my clients too, the hardest thing is once you leave the gym. Because, you know, when you have a trainer, you know, I, I kind of, like, believe it or not, I kind of consider myself like a cheerleader. I don't know if I'm being too modest or not because, you know, my clients, you know, they'll thank me. They'll say, oh, you know, I could have done this without you. And I, and I just tell them, like, you did all the work. I just yeah, had yeah. And, and rooted you on and, and, you know, and cheered you on. But the, the hardest part is when you go home, because when you go home, that's when you have to have more discipline. You got to know not to eat the junk food and, you know, just eat right. Eat right. Everything comes down to eating. Because you can't out train a bad diet, point blank, period. Mm. Yeah. Leon. Yes. How you doing, sir? How you doing, man? Um, doing pretty good. How long would you recommend a person working out a week and also staying on a diet in order to lose a substantial amount of weight? Well, I don't like to necessarily use the word diet because diet sounds so restrictive. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, no, listen, I, I like to have my fun and you know, I eat Chinese food from time to time. I love ice cream. Ice cream is one of my favorite things. So I don't like using the word diet. I like to mainly say, uh, you know, we want to practice better nutrition habits. You know what I mean? Um, but for most people, I would say you want to work out in at least four times a week. You always want to get that over number. If it's seven days in a week, you want to work out at least four times, not three. Nothing, 
nothing under four. I always go for, I say, at least four times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, how long should a person be inside the gym for? Honestly, um, I would say about an hour, hour and a half, moderate workout. And I always make it clear to the people, like me, I like to work out very intense. But this is because this is something that I like to do. You know, I love this. But you don't have to train like you're working out for the Olympics. It's really not is is not necessary. Like you can go to the gym for an hour and a half, and you can still get a good workout in and go home. You don't have to spend hours upon hours in the gym. It's just not necessary. And then, and then, if you're a little bit, like say fifty years old or whatever, you know, uh, middle aged man, uh, just trying to get back into the gym or just really trying to take care of himself for the first time. What's the best form of working out? Um, or exercise, you know, is it is it calisthenics? Is it aerobics? Is it free weights? Is it what? It, what would you say? What would you well, that's you that's say? actually a really good question. So as you get older, and it's funny too, Mr. D. Well, demand that you it's funny, were, Mr. D. It's fine. It's fine. All right, that you were talking <laughs> about. You know, you want to look like uh, Lou Ferrigna. Now, I don't knock anyone for their fitness goals, but I am really a firm believer that as you get older, you don't necessarily want to go for lifting heavy weights. And going for like big, big muscles because you're getting older, you know, your joints, you know, they, they've been through a little bit more wear and tear. You don't really want to put that on your body. You know, if you're older, like you said, uh, I'm sorry, Derek. Yeah, yeah. yeah, if you when you're a little bit older, you want to go for just you know, mobility, strength training, you you know, those type of exercises, just making sure that that you that you can just do your daily activities without being too tired. You know, you want to go for stamina, not necessarily a whole bunch of weightlifting and stuff like that. I would say mainly mobility and core strength because once you once you have like a strong core and you build up your core, I promise you, everything is going to come together. Everything is going to come together. Yeah, Leon, um, I um, had a conversation with um, Kelvin and um, Derek when we were out to dinner this week and um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an advocate believer in stretching. Right. Oh, I feel yeah. Once I started stretching, it just changed my whole dynamics. You know, what definitely. Saying? do you agree with that? Yes, most definitely. Because if you don't stretch, if you don't stretch, you're eventually going to injure yourself. Things are going to pop. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Abs pop. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, actually, especially, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. Dick. No, no, I was just saying that um, I, I try to stretch at least three to four times a week when um. When I before I get up in the morning, get to get my day going, you know. Uh, um, just I'm just curious. Um, how long do you stretch for? I usually stretch for like about maybe I say about sometimes ten minutes to fifteen minutes, depending right, on if I have somewhere to go, you know, if I'm running late or whatever. But I try to get it in. Like you know, my wife helps me stretch. She stretches too. Right. But I noticed since I was stretching, I feel a little bit, a lot more, actually, a lot more energetic. And like you said, my mobility is definitely improved mm -hmm. a lot you know and, and if you and rodney if you can too even try to push that to like 20 30 minutes okay okay yeah. i'm gonna work on it very helpful you'd be surprised <laughs> like uh, you know when i like you especially young younger people like just tight and just they, they it, it's crazy it's crazy mm -hmm. yeah got two, got two questions here what is a good what is a good indicator that your body is working and um skipping rope is, is big now? Do you recommend skipping rope or running? Skipping rope or running? Um also um I want to answer the second question first. Um I'm not really that big on jumping rope, but I love running. I love running. I actually like fell in love with running all over again when the uh when the pandemic first happened because the gyms were closed and uh I, I was just running. Or from like uh, I think from like uh, April to September, so um, I'm definitely a big advocate for running. Skipping rope, I don't really knock it. It's just not really my thing. But I'm not I knocking can't, it. I, I, I can't even jump rope to save my life. I might pay me, but I don't know how to jump rope. It's weird. It, I'm, I'm I'm such an amateur when it comes to skipping rope. That's not my thing. But if you want me to run from here to to Amsterdam and 79th, then I got you. We could do that. <laughs> now the uh, the the first question that she said, what's a, a indicator that your body is working? Um, if, if the person can, can they be a little bit more specific with that question? Because that question is kind of vague. You know, a good indicator of your body could be you woke up and you maybe, feel fine. You know what maybe, I mean? I think, I, think what she's, I think what she's trying to say is to indicate that your body may be burning, like burning fat. 
Well, of course, I mean, I mean, I think the obvious answer would be because even that, that's still kind of vague. And I, I hate to like, I don't want to just dismiss it like that, but it is still kind of vague. But I think like the uh, a quick answer for that would be, you know, you're going to the first indicator that you're losing weight is you're exactly you're not even you're losing weight, close. you're losing inches. Correct. So you're going to build in your pants, your shirts, you know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. Go ahead, D. No, I was going to say, do you have any, like, before and after pictures that we could look at? It? And if, if so, can we look at them? Like, Jamie, do you have them ready for us for them? To show us some of the people? And he can oh, talk yeah, us through. I have a few. I have a few. Yeah, talk Jamie, can you through, see the yeah. yeah, that's my logo right there. Mm -hmm. Jamie, are you there? <laughs> oh, there we go. Got the, oh, okay, we got that. Yeah, these are just some of my clients. That I've worked with before. Um, that's Mariah. That's another one. Her name is Z. Uh, Z. Wow, I see the change. The yeah, yeah. That's actually my niece, and it's that's not from today. That was actually from November. That's me, uh, in May when the pandemic first started to July. So that was my own before and after. Uh, that's somebody I can help get ready for a wedding. Uh, that's one of my other clients. She didn't want to show her face. <laughs> that's another one of my loyals right there. And that's wow. another client mine named uh, Debbie. Smile of faces right there, man. Yeah, and that's just me working out in the park. <laughs> and that's uh, me just getting some of my T-shirts. Mm -hmm. Leon, yeah, um, yeah, I think yeah. the person may have been asking, how do you know that your workout is working? Oh. Oh, that your workout is working? I think that's what they may have been asking. Okay, well, you want to see how do you... And, um, you want to see how you feel after a workout, okay? Because... A good trainer doesn't mean that you went to the gym and you thought you were about to pass out or you had to go to the bathroom and throw up. You know, mm -hmm. a good especially in the beginning, That's a right. good trainer is not going to kill break you. you. Exactly. Yeah, he's gonna, not going to break you. He, he or she is going to assess you. They're going to see what your strong points are. They're going to see what your weak points are, and they're going to work on that. They're going to build you up from the ground up, and then you're going to start doing, you know, the workouts that you might want to do. So I think that I think the, uh, to answer her question, it, it would be more so how does she feel after the workout? Does she feel better about herself? Is her mood better? Does she want to come back to the gym? Is, is that, that, that right there? I think that's the main thing. Do you want to continue to do this? You know what I mean? Because – that's another thing I tell one of my clients. I, you, you have to enjoy working out somewhat because if you don't enjoy it at all, you're not going to do it. Who, who, who's going to keep doing something that they don't like to do at all? That's right. Nobody's not going to do it. You have to find something that you enjoy about it. So if you leave feeling good and you're like, damn, that was good. I want to come back. Then you're definitely on the right path. You know, I always want to know about the pecs. It seems like I could get arms to go up if I do it, if I, you know, but the pec situation, I always thought it was about push-ups and things, but I, the quintessential body type I liked was like Jordan in his prime, just to be cut, to be lean yeah. and to be cut. And I always used to hear that it's, it's uh, less weight, more repetition. But I think people like myself, we I'm, I've never really been part of a gym. I don't know what to do in the gym so what is the starting point is it just to do push-ups or some chin-ups how what, what would you suggest to a person that's never really that's not really a workout freak well somebody that's not really a workout freak i would basically take them through the basics um a lot of the in the beginning a lot of full body exercises and then as you get more and more experience then we could kind of break it down we can break it down into like a upper body day or lower body day or one day we'll just focus mainly on core um, I'm really not a fan of, and I don't knock the people who do it, but I'm just not a fan of, oh, today we're just doing chess. It's a chess day or it's a back day. I feel like that's a really, really outdated way of working out. And it's just not, um, it's not beneficial to people. It's, um, you can get way more results when you work out, when you structure a workout around your whole upper body, as opposed to, okay, Kelvin, today we only doing we we have a chest day. It's 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 useless in my opinion. You, know, you, you mentioned something um, earlier that you, you, what you like to do is run. You mentioned that. 
You know, yeah, that was the thing. So let's say I'm a gentleman right here, 50 years old, but let's say I have plantar fasciitis. All right. I do suffer from that. Um, what do I do to get some of those same benefits? You know, oh, well, Derek, plant, plantar fasciitis. Um, uh, that's really light, man. And um, it's uh, you you need to do what Rodney is doing. Honestly, you you got to start stretching more because I was dealing with that when I first got back into the game. We're running like oh, I remember one night I woke up in pain from plantar fasciitis, and it usually comes down. It's just a stiffness in your calf. You need yes, you just need to stretch out your calf and your ankle. That's all it is. You just need to stretch it out. And I, and I know it's just, I hope I didn't just like kind of just like brush you off, like, oh, no, no, no. no. I, 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 but that, that's the answer. If you're telling me that I have to stretch better, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and that's yeah. one thing that I do acknowledge and I don't do, you know, yeah, you, you stretch. You, you know? Yeah, you, yeah you, I'm telling you, you, you stretch and you stretch consistently, it'll definitely get better. And just make sure that you got a good pair of shoes. No, oh, absolutely. My old trainer, he did, he did help me stretch a lot and it did yeah. make a huge difference. So, yeah, I yeah. didn't fell off. Yeah, even though um, you know it's funny, even though um, at one point I had a trainer, and this was even when I was training people, and uh he used to always laugh at me and just be like, Yo, get some new fucking shoes. You know what I mean? So <laughs> shoes <laughs> they're yeah. really important. They're really yeah. important. Leon, yeah. what do you recommend? Recommend some shoes. Like what's a good running shoe? What's a good working out shoe, a bike riding shoe, anything? Well, the shoes um I use right now, I, I use different shoes for different days. So when I'm doing like a lot of like conditioning exercises, or I know I'm just you know a lot of jumping around and stuff like in the picture you see, usually I used to I used to, I like to just get a pair of sneakers that uh have protection around my ankles. Can I just grab a pair of shoes real quick that I can show you that I like love? Give me a I'm about to get right. I can tell y'all I'm about to get right. <laughs> Don't see Calvin me in July. Don't see me in July, brother. Calvin, Calvin gonna get a, Calvin gonna get a sexy on. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you right okay. now. Great bodies so, are built in you, the winter. See these sneakers yeah. right here. Yep. I I think these are my favorite pair of gym sneakers ever, ever. Why? Because they protect my ankles when I'm doing like a lot of jumping. They're wide enough for when I squat. Just. I feel like these are like the perfect gym sneakers. Now, when I'm running, Nike has these uh, gym sneakers. They're called the Nike Renew Run. These are really, really comfortable for running right here. Very, very comfortable. I don't know how good you guys can see it, but they're really, really comfortable for running. Yep. Is that gel in the heel? I don't know if it's gel, but I know that it's very comfortable. And, I, and, and me, I'm, I'm, I'm a heavy guy. I weigh 225. So, you know, when I'm I'll running, you. I'm 5'11". So, it, it, I pound hard on the ground. So, he's saying he's heavy at 225. I'm trying to get down to 225. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 225 is like a dream. <laughs> yeah, for me to get down to 225, I have to be born again. <laughs> How much you weigh right now? Oh, I'm not even going to say that on the air. We'll talk about it after this. Right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Don't put so, me on the spot like that, Leon. <laughs> so, 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 Leon, Leon, I got, I got two, I got two part question. Sure. Does, does it make any difference with people? Some people pay these high end gym prices, like a hundred something dollars. Some people go to the ten dollar uh, Planet Fitness and all the other ones that we have around. Does it make a difference on the on the type of gym to, to get the get the result? Nope. Uh, in my opinion, absolutely not, because I've been. In I've been to some of the worst gyms, and I've also been to gyms like Equinox before. Now, granted, Equinox, you know, of course, the customer service is a uh, hundred times better than a gym that's located in a bad area. But um, you can get a good workout any gym you go to, yeah. any gym you go to. It doesn't matter. It's just about how bad you want it. Speaking of that, gyms in a bad area. Do you have any kind of interesting stories with gyms in a bad in a bad area? Can you tell us about the money and the interest stories? All right, so this is um, this is like when I was working for a gym. Uh, I won't say which gym, but uh, I was in East New York, and I'll never forget. I was working there as a trainer, and I was training this guy, and you know we were just warming up, you know, just going through little basic things, and this is a true story, y'all. I had him doing jumping jacks. He was doing jumping jacks. And the fucking gun fell out of his pocket. <laughs> wow. Yeah. A gun <laughs> fell out of his pocket. Wow. The the did, it clear, did, it clear the, did it clear the gym out? Yeah, nah, 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 nah. 
Wow. Did you continue to do you continue to work them out? <laughs> I did because <laughs> you were scared. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? I'm no, I'm no, I'm no tough guy. Nothing like that. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But for some reason, I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared. <laughs> no, it's not. Wow. Yo, I, I, I just, I was, I just looked at him. I said, "Yo, what are you doing?" Like, <laughs> I'm like, "Why do you like the beef at the gym?" Yeah. But why do you have that hair right now? Wow. <laughs> he must have thought that was a, a true story. A true story. Oh. Wow. wow. He must have thought he was still in the yard. He, he, next thing yeah. he would have felt was a shank or something. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, yo, Mr. D, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I've never seen nothing like that in my life. No. It's, wow. it's, it's, why it's, would you even think to do jumping jacks with a gun on you? <laughs> and get a one off. Yeah. Get a, yeah. One yeah like, what's, what's wrong with you? Yeah, like you got that many problems that you brought a, a gun to the gym. To the in the gym. hood, you never know. In you never the hood, know. You never know. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe, I, maybe I he's, got his, he's got his muscles on so he can have his fights and, and his shootouts. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. You know. So, Poppy, what? But, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, Rod, you got a question for him? <laughs> no, I just got to put my last my last question. Right, Leon, right. Yes. What sir. would you recommend to somebody as far as changing their eating habits to get started? I would say, um, you know, understand that even that too, just like we're working out, that it's a process. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, some people can go, um, they can do a whole full 360 and change their diet. But what I've come to see with people, when they do that, they usually end up crashing. So let's say that you eat four times a day, right? Let's let's like really be realistic, all right? Let's, uh, let's start by having... Let's have two like really healthy meals, and then let's have your other two meals, but let's but let's lower the portion size. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the way I would go about it. Now, if you feel that you can do a full three sixty as far as you're eating, then go for it. But what I've seen time and time again is that when people try to do that whole three sixty overnight thing and change their diet, like a week or two later, they just end up crashing and they back at square one. Yeah, because when you mention portions, like somebody told me, like your portions shouldn't be bigger than your fists. Is that correct? I I really can't say. I really can't say. I'm me personally. I've never heard that, mm -hmm. and I'm also not the type of person that weighs food and things of that nature. No, so they don't really say weigh it. They don't say weigh it when you put it on your plate. It shouldn't be bigger than your fists. Then that means you got too much food on your plate. I got big hands, bro. Yeah, well, I got big yeah, hands. I don't, I don't, honestly, That's probably I, why we can't lose weight. <laughs> hands are too big. Honestly, honestly, Rodney, I've I've never heard that before. Okay, okay. I've never heard that. Not so, saying that's not that's true, but I just I've never heard that. Okay. So, so Liam, where where can people find you? At? How can they get in touch with you? Oh yeah, um, they can find me on Instagram. Uh, they can find me at uh, my name on Instagram is my name L E O N Leon and the gym. That's L E O N underscore A N D underscore T H E underscore G Y M Leon and the gym. Um, and if anybody want to hit me up, they want to message me just to inquire about my prices and how my uh, training programs work. Please feel free to reach out to me, man. Um, I'm very confident in the work I in the work that I do. Yeah, and on this page it shows all the work for people. They work with, they work with regular regular people like the one like us is in there. And if Absolutely. they can't get, if you don't have Instagram, please hit one of us up, Kelvin, Ronnie, Derek, and myself, or, or Jamie, the producer, and then we'll get you in touch with Leon. In the, Absolutely, in the Absolutely, brother. We appreciate you coming on tonight, man. It's a lot of fun, a lot of a lot of in yeah. insight and information that you gave out to the people, man. And you gotta yeah, be really safe. No more hood, no more hood gyms, bro. No more hood gym. Yeah, I know. I, know. I had to leave it in the past. I had to leave it. In the yeah, past. yeah. Let, let them go work out at Rikers. They'd be all right over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brother. Peace and tell all your right. sister I love you. Tell your mom. Tell your mom I love her too. Tell your mom I love her too. All right, all right, right brother. Good one, y'all. Good night. Oh man, that was good. That was good. Calvin, man. You blowing up? You blowing up, Calvin? You know what it is. <laughs> I know what it is. I know. You know. I know. <laughs> So, so gentlemen, we had another good show tonight. We had Doctor Doctor B, um, Doctor Bartholomew, aka Doctor B, Doctor Bell. They all give a lot of insight and information. Mm -hmm. Please follow their pages, everyone. And Leon brought it in with the old-fashioned, natural way of just going hard, workout, and That's eating it. proper in the gym. So, you know, it's, it's a different, a lot of different ways for people to get to their goals. And people, and to me, the lesson today is 
do whatever ha- makes you happy and whatever gets you to that goal. So whatever makes you right. happy, you do it. Right. Kind of way you want to. You know, so it's better. Find, better a way to lo- find a way to love yourself. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, brothers, I love you all again, man. This is a great show we had tonight. I love tonight. you guys, too, man. All right, love man. You too, guys. All right, man. Peace. And we didn't have the white man walk out tonight. This is something else, man. This is messed up. <laughs> Where's our favorite white dude, man? Come on, Derek, man. No, come on, Derek. <laughs> He's still wearing that T-shirt. Yeah. Bring him He's on vacation. Him. He's on vacation. He's on vacation. Leave him alone. All right. Peace. See you, everyone, in seven days. Seven days. we we'll see you all. Later. Peace. All right. <laughs>